Hey guys, welcome back. So it's really loud over there, but I'm going to, uh, basically we're cutting this kind of a transmission cap or this cover off this transmission, which mounts the hitch. I'm going to uh, just kind of film a little bit. And then when it gets quieter down a little more later, we will uh, explain what's going on. But you, I'm gonna show you the inside and you can see it's all welded and it has to get all cut out. I'm gonna use the plasma for that. This is what we're cutting off. So all these gussets have to come off. And then this is why we're cutting it off. Okay, we got the gussets out. Unfortunately, I forgot all of my phone stands and my camera. So I can't do any time-lapse footage at the moment, but I can show you progress reports. So now we're gonna take the plasma and go around this whole thing. Cut it off and pick it up with the crank. All right, well, we got it off. She was fighting us a little bit, but it doesn't have a choice. So, all right, start getting this cleaned up now. Okay, so while I am working on the transmission area, these guys are cutting these skins out. So it had a floor skin, which is good we're cutting it out because it's really thin. That should be uh, about 3 8 and that's, I don't know, about 3 16 Side skins, we're removing all that. We're gonna be fixing these dents. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen in here. I just kind of wanted to show you the beautiful air arc mess that we have going on in here. And uh, um, just kind of removing these skins and, you know, chasing the plug welds that you can't see. That's a, that's a fun skill to learn. So just wanted to show, show these guys getting these out because there's a lot of Three, three guys, there's a lot of progress happening. And I'm gonna start prepping this top plate here, but I wanted to show what it looked like. So this is how far I got it with the plasma. You can see, got a pretty good edge there. All this stuff comes right off. Minimal grinding. You can see the gussets that were in here. Gouge those out. Um, and then yeah, that plate sits on here and it was welded from behind here. And that's what was messing me up yesterday. 
so I ended up cutting all the way through it this way because I didn't want to lay down in here an air arc. You can only imagine how that would be. So now we just got to clean it up and start test fitting it. Well, this brand is junk. Don't buy this. I bought this kit thinking it'd be nice to have, but all the edges is brand new. Never used it. The hole is drilled slightly bigger than what it's supposed to be. All the edges are rounded. Won't cut. Don't buy that brand. All right, so now we gotta find another three quarter MPT tap. Well, that fit really good. So now we're just gonna clean that out, get all the dingleberries and slag out. Good thing about hiring a small guy, he fits in there. These guys are making good, they're making good progress here. Lots of, uh, lots of air arcing. All right, well, it's coming together. All right, so this is how we're gonna line it up. This is how I did the last one. Got centering cones on that bore. That bore is good. It's got a nice chamfer. 
all the way around, centering cones to sit on that. Made some sleeves, slide inside here. Um, got our face measurement. Yeah, we're good to go. So, we're gonna double check it again and then we're just gonna start tacking it and checking to make sure that, you know, the bar didn't move or anything. Nice fillet welds. Okay, we got it tacked into place. See our spacers just move. So we're uh, very close on alignment. This, these holes are undersized, so we will have to set the line bore up and cut these holes to actual size, and then we will weld and bore that hole just to make sure that all three are perfect. I think they said that bushing was a little bit loose anyways, but I always do all three holes. All right, we'll finish getting this tacked up a little bit better. And then we're gonna preheat it and then weld it out. Kind of see how the torch affects the steel on a more visual level. You can see the hot spots. That's a little bit thinner right there, so it heated up faster. All right, we got a little bit more to go, and then we'll start welding. All right, well, making good progress here. It's crazy just how much dirt gets in there just from having little cracks and stuff. And it just fills up these, the whole side of this thing. It's just insane how much dirt gets in there. Okay, I got Wes over there welding out that that uh, piece we put on I'm gonna come over here and start fine-tuning all these cuts but I wanted to show you how this was already cracked and yeah, we cut around that but this was you know pretty much getting ready to fail just like those other ones I've showed you so that's why we cut it so far back so we can reinforce this so that these won't be an issue in the future Looks like someone's already welded this. But the way they, they build these, they basically build them from this side, like sitting flat on a table. And then they have, this is a formed piece, a channel like this. And they're able to get stitch welds inside and then they cap it with this. And then it's uh, finished off with plug welds going through this to this all along there. 
So all right, we're just gonna start cleaning this up and uh, getting it ready to accept the new material. All right, so I decided to just cut all that out because it wasn't gonna be, it wasn't gonna look right with these dents and stuff in here. And then trying to like butt weld a piece in there, it wasn't gonna look good. So we're gonna cut all that out. Well, change of location. We are at my shop after discussing with the customer a little bit. We've decided to sandblast this whole frame and paint it out here. Eliminate some headache of doing it at their location. 
we have I put new bumpers on it I have a couple of videos about doing bumpers if you're interested in how I did that so now we're gonna we're gonna blast it and this cross member right here is an update so you can clearly see those aren't factory welds in there it does look like dual shield it does look like they did a decent job but we're gonna blast all that check it for cracks still have to line bore or uh, hitch I would say that uh, Wes did a good job in here welding still have to get the dingleberries and whatnot off But for the most part, Wes did a really good job welding it on. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make this probably like a three or four part series because there's just so much work that's being done to the scraper. And you're just going to see a little bit of everything in each video. So I'm going to call this part one right here. Part two will probably be just specifically line boring those holes. And then part three will continue on, um, on, on whatever we do next to it. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two.